everything you keep it clean it's time to finally get it started but what exactly are we getting started well unfortunately it's the focus on the 2024 nfl season because the 2023 season is officially done the chiefs all the Super Bowl champions, we all had high expectations for the Baltimore Ravens. And then a lot of our expectations were not only met, but surpassed in the regular season. Uh, and then playoffs came around, and for the first game, it was great. But the second game was obviously a much different story. But now we turn the page to the 2024 season prematurely, but it is what it is. But um, with Team Keep It Clean, I, I asked the Team Keep It Clean patrons, and shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. I asked them the other day. Like, how we feeling? What, what, what we doing uh, in the offseason? What are our plans for the offseason? And, and let's hear what some of them had to say. Oh, my God, Dominique, he said, sit back and relax until the schedule release comes out and start planning that trip to Dallas or a trip to L.A. So he ready to go to some games next year. Uh, Joshua said, watch some Team Keep It Clean videos and some NBA now. Ain't much to do till summer. It's going to suck seeing a different Ravens team next year. It sure will. Uh, Harrison said, I'm too sad to think about it. I couldn't even watch the Super Bowl. N definitely not watching ESPN. Just had a new baby boy. My wife joked with me and said that th he would be a Steelers fan. Boy, wouldn't have a home. LOL, but keep grinding, man. <laughs> Appreciate that, Harrison. Um, John, John said he's just going to chill and watch the videos and see who the Ravens pick up. And let's hopefully make it back to the ship and win it this time. Um, I got Martin said he's just chilling till football season starts again. As Modius, he said he's grinding on himself. And he hit a big milestone. So shout out to my guys. He said he lost 40 pounds so far and playing to lose 75 pounds more. I need to get like you, my friend. That's great for real, man. Oh, my God. Kevin said congrats on, a, on, uh, on the baby girl. Refocus. And we put ourselves right back in the situation next season. Don't forget who we are next time. And we should win. And Danell said too hurt to even think about football. But I know as soon as the league year starts, I'll be there. And, yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, funny with my guy Kevin, what he said. Refocus and we put ourselves right back in the situation next season. Just don't forget who we are next time. So that's something that's been ringing a lot of bell, uh, ringing a lot of bells with Ravens fans because the Ravens just keep on doing the same thing in the big moments. They keep forgetting who they are, and that's an issue. That's a really, really big issue. But we got a lot of issues to talk about in this episode of questions from subscribers, uh, questions from Team Keep It Clean. And this special episode is going to focus on the Team Keep It Clean patrons question. And if you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingviz. And if you don't want to, you know I still love you regardless. We got some fire questions to get into to get us started. Uh, we are going to start with my guy, Harry. He said him. What's good engraving in the Team Keep It Clean family? I had to take some time away and calm myself down after the AFC Championship game. I waited to the end of the year presser from the Ravens, hoping that watching that would give me as a fan some answers and, and hope it did not. You know what? Real quick, I had meant to watch. I never watched it. I didn't even watch it this year. Didn't watch it. I didn't, I, I didn't like protest it or not watch it out of being angry or anything like that. I just didn't watch it. I had meant to, but... Got caught up, got busy, forgot about it, and it never really just never ended up being important to me to watch. Um, so I feel like I didn't really miss anything. though. But anyway, let's continue. Uh, he said, um, EDC, for the most part, gave me hope that he will do his best to get the pieces for us to have a team good enough to make it to the Super Bowl. Now, and hey, he did that this year. EDC, we had some questions about EDC, especially going into last season. He exceeded expectations. by He did his thing. He, he did his thing. So, EDC, great job last year. Um, and he said, my problem, which it is most of the time, is with John Harbaugh. The reporter asked, why every time we have a team that makes it to the playoffs, do we go away from what got us to the playoffs? That's, yeah, that's that. Now, I do remember seeing that sound clip. Oh, that's just how the game went. But let me, let me continue. Um, he said, Harbaugh answered, that's a fair criticism and a fair assessment. Then he proceeded to state that the other team's coaches just had better game plans and they dictated to the Ravens to change their game. My question is simple after those statements. Why is John Harbaugh still the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens? I honestly feel whatever players EDC gets, no matter how well Lamar and others play, no matter how good the team is in the regular season, John Harbaugh will go away from what we do best and get out coached in the postseason. I don't believe John Harbaugh is a good coach. And with statements that he said, I don't see why Steve Bishotti should feel he is a good coach either. Harbaugh is the reason we have two Lombardi trophies instead of four or possibly five. He's wasting the team's talents. And I think that's part of the reason the staff was willing to go. The, oh, the staff was willing to go to other teams. Let me know your thoughts. Well, about that last part. 
why the staff is willing to go to other teams. I don't think that's an indictment on John Harbaugh right there because if you get an opportunity to get a promotion, if you if you at your current job right now and you want a promotion, you want to move up, but there's no availability for you to move up and you see that availability somewhere else, then you're going to take it. You're going to take it. A, a, a new position, a, a raise, a, a new um, job position that's higher than what yours was before. Oh, yeah, you're going to take that all day. So I don't think that's an indictment on John Harbaugh. But, however, the Baltimore Ravens completely losing their identity in the biggest moments. That is. And that's an issue. Um, and it's continued to be an issue. And it's something that's very, very scary to think about when you think about the long term of these Baltimore Ravens. You think about, man, how are they going to be when they get there? How are they going to be? Like regular season, everybody cool with regular season. They like regular season, oh, yeah, Ravens, as long as they're healthy for the most part, they, they got regular season taken care of. But playoffs is where everybody is. Well, and if you're not, you should be scared. You should be worried because this has been a pattern with a healthy Baltimore Ravens team this has been a pattern because I can't count last year because Tyler Huntley, he was playing in a playoff game last year. But this has been and, – and even even in that game, like for them to put the ball on Tyler Huntley and J.K. Dobbins, he talked about it too. But anyway, it's been a pattern for Ravens to just go away from stuff that's worked, to get away from themselves, and that's a big issue. And you can think – Oh, all right, we'll just get back next year and we'll fix it next year. This has been going on since this happened in 2019. Because we're just going to talk about this Baltimore Ravens era right here. We're going to talk about the Joe Flacco, this era right here. This same thing happened in 2019. They li literally had a record-breaking rushing team. Record-breaking. Featured, obviously, Lamar Jackson, uh, Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, um, but they went into the playoffs, and Mark Ingram was hurt. He was hurt. I forgot what 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 injury he had, but he was hurt. Maybe it was a high ankle sprain, I think. But you still you had a healthy Gus Edwards. They literally ran the ball with their running back six times, six times. Now Lamar, he ended up running a lot. Cause, I mean, he had a run for his life, but they ran the ball six times, six with their running backs. Remember, remember this game a couple weeks ago against the Kansas City Chiefs and a bad run defense, Kansas City Chiefs? It's like the, with the Ravens, it's just, it's just weird. Why why are we not doing the obvious? Why are we going away from the obvious? Oh, bad run defense? Okay, attack them. Why are we not attacking them? And it's like it's been under different offensive coordinators. And even, even we go back to Lamar's rookie year. Like it's crazy because in the biggest moments – it seems like the coaching staff does not put these players in positions to succeed. It's not all on the coaching staff. Players still got to execute too now. But if we even go back to 2018, since we're still talking about this era, um, that was Lamar Jackson's first playoff start against the Chargers. They had just played the Chargers a couple of weeks ago. And they, they took care of business against the Chargers in a big way. Played them again. First quarter, all the RPO stuff's not working. They still keep doing it. Second quarter, all the RPO stuff's not working. They still keep doing it. It's like, all right. They wanted to wait till halftime, make some adjustments. Cool. Nope. No adjustments. Third quarter, still doing the same stuff. It's not working. They still keep doing it. Still keep doing it. Fourth quarter, guess what? They decided to open up the passing game. Guess what? It worked. <laughs> this has been an issue for the longest. For the longest. They keep going away from what works, and they don't make adjustments at the right time, in time, in real time. And then they look back at it. Oh, we should have done this. Oh, we should have. And this has been happening since Lamar's rookie year. Rookie year. Rookie year. First offensive coordinator was Marty, Mor Marty Morningwick. Second offensive coordinator was Greg Roman. Now the offensive coordinator is Todd Monkey. And initially we would think, oh, man, these offensive coordinators, why they call them play like that? But then it's like, hold up. The same issue has been happening with different offensive coordinators. But we still got the same head coach. Lamar needs to stop. Next question came from A.W. Juice, man. He said, I hope all is well with you uh, on that Super Bowl afternoon. I wish it could have been us, but it is what it is. Anyway, who allow me to go into details about Lamar Jackson. Here's an analogy. As a kid, I had a tendency for wanting to be friends with everyone, going out of my way to please everyone. I did things out of my ordinary to try to impress them for them to think I was cool. Mainly for the ones who didn't like me no matter what I did, how nice I treated them. 
Some days they were okay to me, but usually it was always back to bad mouthing me and putting me down. My mom used to tell me if someone doesn't like you, no matter how good you treat them, there's nothing you can do to change their perception of you. I realized I had true friends that liked me no matter how different I was or how unorthodox my social skills were, but they loved, like cherished and accepted me. Uh, that was in the late 90s. Fast forward to 20 plus years later and put Lamar in that scenario, but not with making friends, but with his football career and playing style. We know Lamar wants to put on a show and wow and impress all the Ravens nation. However, it seems as though when the lights are the brightest and the stage is at its biggest, Lamar Jackson listens to his boos more than he does his cheers and he turns into that kid. That I was, minus making the friends, of course, but he has to go out of his way to show everyone, mainly his haters and critics, he's capable of being a passing quarterback in this league. Now, we know that he is and that he can be that, but his haters will always say otherwise, no matter what he does. And it seems as though Lamar's ego of showing he's a pocket passer is getting in the way of his success to reach the promised land. Lamar needs to realize that no matter what, passing, rushing, stat, Records, he breaks or does both in a game. Example, he can pass for 385 plus yards, five touchdowns, 30 out of 37 completions, and 190 rushing yards, plus a two rushing touchdown. And his haters are still going to bash him and bad mouth him because they simply do not like him at all the way his Louisville and Ravens fans do. Moral of the story, go out there and be yourself is what I'm trying to say. And LJ needs to stop trying to impress his critics and haters. Oof, that was a good one. Um, and yeah, that's a, a big, big part of it too. Ravens just not playing their game. Lamar not playing his game too. That, that, that has been an issue. We saw it in this last game. It's like, and I like how you said it about the stats and the records and this and that, breaking all these records and it's cool. Those are great, but especially come playoff time, really, really regular season, but especially come playoff time, you got to let it all out there. You got to put it all out there. And you got to do everything that you possibly can do, not for a certain record, not for a certain stat, but to win. Because this is it. Like, we talked about it all year that Lamar Jackson was clearly holding back. He was clearly holding back. We could all tell that he was holding back. Then in that playoff game, um, he said, oh, in that Texans game, he, he, he showed us like, oh, okay, there we go. But in the Chiefs game, it's like he went to hold him back again. He went to hold him back. And it was like, whoa, what's... What's going on? A lot of people highlight that play, that, that fourth down play. That um, I think the Ravens were down, I want to say 14-0, and the, the, they were going for it on fourth down. I forget what the score was, but the Ravens were down. They were going for it on fourth down. Maybe it was 7-0. I don't remember. But anyway, um, Lamar Jackson, he broke through, broke through the offensive line, and it was just him. Maybe it was LeJarrius Sneed. I forget which cornerback it was. But he could have outran him. He had an angle, but he slowed down. He slowed down. He's looking at the cornerback and whatnot. Maybe he's trying to make him, but it's like, hey, what's 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 going on, man? What, what what's what's happening? And uh, so that 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 was that. Um, but yeah, it's that's a big part of it too. He got to just you you cannot play to try to prove something. Don't try, don't play prove it ball. Play winning football. The next question came from my guy, Moore, and in the next couple of questions, actually. He said, now that the season is over, I have to issue an apology, and my apology goes out to EDC. This time last year, I was saying, man, we need to move on from EDC. He's not getting the job done. My biggest gripe was his drafts were bad, but boy, did those draft picks show up this year. Keith Mitchell, well, Keith Mitchell was an undrafted rookie free agent, so he don't count as a draft pick, but he was a good signing, though. Uh, Geno Stone, Matabike, PQ, Brandon Stevens, Tyler Linderbaum, uh, Zay Flowers, Isaiah Likely, and I still think Adafi and Bateman have potential. Those guys really showed out in a big way. I, I didn't say anything earlier because usually when I start praising the team, <laughs> they fall apart, LOL. Jinx may not, may maybe not really, but I didn't want to hurt our chances just in case. But not only those draft picks for EDC, kills at the trade deadline with Marcus Peters, Calais Campbell, and Roquan Smith being absolute studs and steals, a uh, big free agent signing in hashtag JC24 and Kyle Vinoy, whom I really hope the Ravens bring back. Oh, and he got the Lamar deal done. That was huge. It was. EDC did a phenomenal job last year. Phenomenal job. Uh, last season just really setting the Ravens up for success and, and you could tell that he did a phenomenal job because the Ravens lost a lot of people throughout the season for different uh, amounts of time throughout the season um, some of those guys came back some of those guys didn't um, but the Ravens still kept winning they still kept playing amazing football so that showed that they had a lot of quality depth on the team and how's that depth built well, that's from your general manager making the deals. He also said, man, people got to chill with this. Lamar is a fraud talk. Patrick Mahomes is the only current quarterback to win a Super Bowl in the AFC besides Flacco and Aaron Rodgers. But 
So I, I don't see how anyone can say Lamar is a fraud when literally nobody else has won. Uh, has won one. He played a bad game. Sure, if Zay doesn't fumble on a one yard line, no disrespect towards Zay. I know he was just trying to make a play for the team, but uh, I'm saying Lamar is one fumble away from a potential Super Bowl. And two, uh, Lamar, I say this: don't let this get you down. After all the guys before, we had a wide receiver that had the ball knocked out of his hands in the end zone in the AFC Championship game, and then the next year we won a Super Bowl. But let's stay calm and run it back. I like it. And yeah, that's something that I don't think about enough when it comes to. This that AFC Championship game, Lamar technically threw a touchdown, but Zay Flowers just fumbled it. And I get what Zay Flowers was doing; he was really trying to make a play. play. He was pressing because the Ravens' offense just they hadn't been doing anything. And then they got that big play a couple plays earlier, and they were right there. It's like, oh yeah, let me just dive in, get this touchdown, and then boom, got knocked out. Next question came from my guy, Nick Brick. He said, engraving, shaking my head. Is it better to have loved and lost or never to have loved at all? I'm glad we got this far, but I hate to see it all in, in an embarrassing, pitiful fashion. But we move on. I'll keep my question short. Do you think the Ravens offense would be better if we brought back Hollywood? Reason I think so is because we know Lamar is picky. It's unexplainable, but the, there are guys that he can get the ball to with ease and guys that he just can't. With Zay and Hollywood, I feel like Lamar could throw for 4,000 yards easy. I don't know what it is about Holly and Zay, but Lamar doesn't miss them. We've been talking about Lamar's deep ball all year, but when it was him and Hollywood, Lamar was on the money, assuming Hollywood caught it LOL. I'm just saying, I don't think it's as dumb as an idea as people are acting. It's not about who's the best, but who fits Lamar the best. Plus, I'm not afraid to say I love Hollywood. He belongs here. Oh, I'm not afraid to say it either. We loved Hollywood. Shout out to Holly. Um, I wouldn't be mad if they did that at all. And like you talked about the deep ball, I think with, um, with Hollywood, uh, one of the reasons that his uh, his deep ball, Lamar Jackson's deep ball was so good with Hollywood is because Hollywood had that that speed, that real speed. And Zay Flowers is no slouch when it comes to speed. Uh, neither is Rashad Bateman, but Hollywood's speed was on another level um, faster than those guys. Uh, so that's why him and Lamar, well, they, they just, they were able to get it like that, man. Um, so... It was just, it was a beautiful thing seeing. So imagine if you had a Hollywood, I don't think it's going to happen. I would love it if it did happen, but I don't think it will. But imagine if you had a Hollywood Brown with that speed and he had Zay Flowers with that speed and that and that agility. Um, and then Rashad Bateman too. And it's just, it, it'd be a nice scenario too. And then Nelson Aguilar too. Like those, that would not be a slow wide receiver group at all. They, that'd be some real nice speed out there. Um, but I just, I don't think it's going to happen. Next question, well, more so comment came from my guy, Jason E.G. said, this was about the Chiefs and Ravens game. He said, horribly called offensive game. Two end zone turnovers, one blatant defensive pass interference. Chiefs were gifted, especially with the no calls and not running the ball on a defense that Buffalo just ran all over. That is the game summary. And he is thousand percent spot on. Next question came from my guy Dominique. He said, Hey man, hope you're doing well. I'm still grieving over that loss. It was a weird game plan. I felt the Ravens had yesterday. Well, he won the game. He's the number two Russian team in the league, knowing the Chiefs defense could not stop what we had on the ground. I feel like when we play the Chiefs, we always revert from what is actually working. It's not like we were down 20 with five minutes left. I'm disappointed in the monkey because this was his worst call game all year, and he chose the wrong time to do so. He isn't the only one to blame, though. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Very, 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 very frustrating. Um, Ravens had everything in their favor. They, they had It was a perfect setup, but they let it all fall apart. Next question came from my guy, Travis B. He said, hey, man, so with Odell Beckham Jr. and Nelson Aguilar hitting the free agency this offseason, well, maybe Odell Beckham Jr. We'll see if they end up releasing him or they ended up signing him to a contract extension. We'll see. But anyway, uh, with those two hitting free agency this offseason, how do you think the Ravens will approach getting Lamar new weapons? And hope you and the family are doing great and keep up the great work. Appreciate it, Travis. Um, same way they, they, they continue to approach it. Uh, a mix of free agency and the draft. Because Devin Duvernay is a free agent too now. Don't forget about him. Um, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins. But, yeah, as far as the wide receivers, the pass catchers, 
think the same way. Free agency and, and through the draft. So a healthy mix of both. The next question came from my guy Plex. He said, it's a tough loss. It's like when we play the Chiefs, it's Coach Klein versus Coach Red from the Water Boy. And Coach Red has the green playbook and we had a chance. The first half was rough. Defense showed up in the second half and I appreciate them for that. Offense had the opportunity. Zay fumbling was critical. I hate it for him. A young guy trying to make a play. Lamar was pressing on that interception. There was plenty of time left. Bateman was non-existent. It's not his fault. He was put into positions in this game, really the season, to make plays. I know we're not picking up the fifth-year option. I do want Odell Beckham Jr. back. I don't know what the contract will be like, but the leadership I saw from him is something I want to keep. Munkin let me down a bit. It wasn't a Roman performance, but some of the situational play calling brought back memories. It's going to be a completely different team next season. With the roster we had and the injuries to other teams, we came up short when we really couldn't afford to. This should have been the year. I agree 1,000%. Gus only having three carries is inexcusable We fell behind early but the game was never out of reach To where we should have abandoned the run Right uh, He said I don't know what next season is going to look like We really needed something to shake our way It didn't happen At least nothing major And yeah just to go piece by piece Zay fumbling was critical Yeah it was He said the young guy trying to make a play Lamar was pressing on an interception The one that likely um, But yeah that should have been pass interference too though um, So yeah it's a double whammy and Bateman was non-existent <sighs> tough man he said it's not his fault he was putting up he wasn't put in a position in this game really the season make plays and there was someone they just missed but it's just it's tough um now as far as odell he said he wants the leadership back um odell is tricky great leadership amazing leadership um but leadership is great but on the field uh the contributions on the field in my opinion they got to be there too that's why it's tricky with odell so with odell i wouldn't mind him back not at the number that he was in. And I get it. This year, Ravens were desperate because you had to get Lamar. Lamar wanted Odell Beckham Jr. and DeAndre Hopkins. Um, Ravens got Odell, and they, they really had to press because Jets were getting ready to get Odell for way cheaper. Ravens say, here, let, let, we'll give you about five times more than what they're going to pay you. Uh, and they, they paid him. He, got a, he made a lot of money this year. Uh, but now I just, for that price, yeah, that's that would be a no-go for me. Um, but I, hey, I ain't the GM. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, and he said to add on, we treated this game like a four by one when it was really a marathon. It started off fast. Mahomes had maybe one incompletion in the first. After that, the defense settled down, but the offense was still in panic mode. It's like we were playing to keep up with them when we really didn't have to. It was 17-7 at halftime. We got the first stop and should have got to play in our game. We beat ourselves for the umpteenth time. And I didn't want to do it, but... It leads me back to the head man in charge, John Doc Rivers Harbaugh. He's been living off that one championship. It's been a decade. There needs to be a coaching change if we don't win it all next season. Making it to the bowl isn't enough. Mm. Those are some powerful words to end off his question right there. John Harbaugh. Um, that is a big common denominator with this thing because it's like the same thing. It keeps happening in so many different ways, but it all leads back to the same issue. <laughs>